Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice homemade exponential equation. Well, it's not entirely exponential because it's kind of non-standard or maybe you, you will call it a transcendental because we don't really have a standard equation. We have the exponential equation on one side or exponential expression and we have the x, which is the polynomial on the right-hand side. So how do you bring those together? There's no standard way of solving it. You can definitely do guess and check. Guess and check is okay. But if you want to solve this systematically, we need to use our superpowers. You know what it is? It is the big W. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So let's go ahead and start by separating the expressions. Like this can be written as We can go ahead and write this as e to the second power divided by e to the power two root x, and that is equal to x. And then I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both sides by e to the power two root x, so it's gonna be like this. And I wanna write the x first, x times e to the power two root x equals e squared. Now, this is the time we use our superpowers. Again, it's called the big W, AKA, Lambert's W function. But how? So here's how it works. We're gonna go ahead and square root both sides. And that's actually motivated by the fact that the exponent for E is root X, but we it's multiplied by X. So whenever you see something like this or something similar, that's definitely calling for square rooting because we do need the same thing. What do I mean by that? What I mean is if you apply Lambert's W function to t to the t, then you get t as an output. Make sense? So we're going to go ahead and simplify this first and then apply the super power or the special function. Now, when you square root x, it's just going to be the square root of x. And when you square root something like this, it's basically raising it to the power one half, which means you're going to get rid of the two in the exponent. In other words, this is going to be e to the power square root of x. You see why it's helpful? By the way, homemade means I came up with the idea, but pretty much anyone can come up with an idea like this. And in the, at this point, let me go ahead and take the positive square root. By definition, it's supposed to be that way anyways. So we get the following equation, which is much nicer than the original one, don't you think? We have square root of x times e to the power square root of x equals e. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and apply this property of the super duper W. And here's how it goes. First, let's apply to the left hand side. W of square root of x times e to the power of square root of x is just going to be square root of x from the definition, right? And what about W of e? Because you have to W both sides. By the way, if a is equal to b, you're allowed to use the same function on both sides because that means a function is well defined, right? The opposite direction is not always true because that would mean that the function is one to one or injective. That's a different story. But this way, it's always possible. So, what is we? Well, if you think about it, you can write this as 1 times e to the power 1, and that becomes 1. Again, by the definition. So, we kind of get these two equations. Nice, isn't it? Absolutely. Because this means that square root of x is equal to 1 now, right? By our definition, we got two equations. We were able to simplify them. In other words, I applied Lambert's W on both sides. I didn't show it, but I did them separately and then set them equal to each other. You can also do W on both sides. Some people find it easier. I most of the time do it that way, but this time I wanted to do it a little differently. Great. So now we got the following equation, obviously, which is a lot simpler. And you can definitely check this with the original problem. Because if square root of x is equal to 1, then x is equal to 1. And this is true because e to the power 0 equals 1. Yay, we got a solution that works. Cool. So square root of x equals 1 implies that x is equal to 1 if you square both sides. If you had the opposite, then it will be a different story. Like x squared equals 1 would imply two solutions. x equals 1 would it imply uh, square root of x equals 1 or negative 1? Well, it depends. Okay. We're in the real world. 
because this channel is all about real numbers. I mean, even though it's, it's not mentioned, I have another channel called A plus BI, which is all about complex numbers. So when you get a chance, go ahead and check it out because I go over a lot of good problems. And today's problem also contains E, which is Euler's number. Thanks to Euler, we have a number that we can kind of use in several different problems and fun. Okay, so what do we get? X equals one. The million dollar question is, is that the only solution? That's a good question, right? Something to check. But if you consider the graphs of these two functions, let me show you what they are. Uh, one of them, it looks like this. I did it with Wolfram Alpha and I didn't include it here, but Y equals X is obviously a straight line. And guess what? They can only intersect at a single point. So there's only one real solution. I'm not going into the complex solutions. You can do that if you want uh, in Wolfram Alpha. By the way, if you're using Lambert's W function with Wolfram Alpha, then write, just write it as product log, product log, one word. Okay, great. But notice that we could also do the following. I guess you could call this the second method. So again, back to our original problem. And remember, we manipulate this a little bit and we got the following. Let's go ahead and pick it up from there so we don't have to do the same work one more time, right? Or actually, we don't really need to do that because my second method is going to take care of that. Take a look. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I will go ahead and use substitution. You know why? Because it's fun. So let's go ahead and do this. Set square root of x equal to u, which means u is greater than 0. Be careful because we're dealing with real numbers. So the square root of a real number is also supposed to be greater than or equal to 0. Why didn't I set u equal to zero. Can u not be zero? Can u be zero? Okay, I'm talking about the letter u, not u. So don't get me wrong. u cannot be zero because if u is zero, x is zero, but x equals zero does not satisfy the equation. You probably know that, right? e squared does not equal zero as far as I know. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. But here's what we get from here. If square root of x is u, that means x is equal to u squared. And now we're going to plug it in. 2 minus 2u. And if it's your birthday, Happy birthday to you. It was an intentional, just came up. And x is equal to u squared. Nice. So now we can do the following. Same idea. e squared divided by e to the 2u equals u squared. And then cross multiply u squared times e to the power 2u equals e squared. You might be saying something like, it's the same thing. You're just using substitution. Why do you present it as a second method? Well, here's the thing. I'll do it differently. I can now write e to the 2u as e to the u squared. Notice that I have the uh, product of two squares, which I can write as the square of a product, which is u times e to the u squared. Aha, uh -huh. this is where it becomes very different. Now, this has two solutions. You know that, right? If a squared equals b squared from difference of two squares, you know that a equals b or a equals negative b. This means u e to the u is equal to e, or u e to the u is equal to negative e. Uh-oh, didn't we just say that u is positive? Yes, we did. So this won't work. Think about it. u, a positive quantity times e to the power of positive quantity, which is always positive, by the way, regardless of the sign of u, will never be negative because we know that e is positive, right? Hopefully. So this is the only solution. Again, you can use Lambert's w, but let's follow a different path and write this as 1 times e to the power 1 by 1 to 1 correspondence. Wouldn't it be nice if u was equal to 1? And yes, that's the case. u equals 1, which means square root of x is 1, which means x is equal to 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus B I. And bye-bye.